glad scientist and I make live virtual reality concert experiences. I had been making immersive art installations since probably like 2008 and uh, one day after the whole Kickstarter with Oculus and all that, um, one day it just hit me like, hey, virtual reality is immersive art, you know, I can use that to make installations and make experiences. Um, so that really got me interested. And then I started to, you know, save up, eventually got a Vive and a laptop. And first thing I did was actually I got Soundstage VR, which is the music making software that I use to perform live. Um, and then I started experimenting with what else I could do with that behind the scenes to create immersive experiences. I grew up really into video games and uh, <laughs> I knew that's what I wanted to do when I grew up since I was like five and I went to Georgia Tech actually for computational media, uh, which is a new major they had that's literally the merging of computer science and art. Uh, so I have that as a background and then I've, when I studied abroad in Barcelona I started to see you know, the React table, people doing really interesting things with interactive art and music um, and ever since then I've just decided, hey, I want to be an artist who uses code to make art. I want to push things to the limit and have these interactive, magical experiences where maybe people get it, maybe they don't. Um, and it, it creates that level of interaction where it really creates that kid-like wonder again, right? Yeah, so all the music is created live. Um, basically in soundstage you have the ability to set up an array of synthesizers, sequencers, um, oscillators, samplers, all this different stuff so you can basically treat it as you would treat a normal DAW digital audio workstation. Um, so for me being a musician since I was probably like three or something, um, it's really natural for me because um, it fuses the hardware side of it as well as the the digital programming side of music as well. So you get that kind of marriage of things that are impossible in the analog synthesizer world, and then the ability to still go and grab something, which is really awesome. Yeah, so there are a few things that, that greatly influence, I think, my approach to thinking about art and seeking more inspiration. Uh, one of them is just a deep connection to nature. Um, whenever I go to nature, I listen to rivers for like long periods of time. Um, I call it like mind massaging, um, and it really kind of clears and allows new ideas to form and new inspiration from nature. And then in addition to nature, I mean, there are artists like Apex Twin, Boards of Canada, um, Bjork, who do things that are just so impactful and from a deep place that is really totally unique to them. As they see the stage, they see me on stage with the HTC Vive headset um, in my own virtual world and able to see exactly what I see on the screen behind me and then have side screens that actually have the visuals that are all sound reactive to the music that I'm doing. So they're able to have the view of the performer as well as have the visual experience of the music itself in its abstract form. The music that I'm making is all coming from synthesizers and sequencers that I'm manipulating in real time, um, you know, switching out different parts, all that good stuff. And then the visuals are all sound reactive, so they're reacting to the different frequencies, reacting to the different amplitude that's coming out and creating those patterns. On the, on the other additional screens. For me, it's actually the beginning of a, a new art form. So what I've been doing is actually testing this out to see how people react to experiencing virtual reality in a live concert uh, atmosphere. And I'm working on building out a multi-headset VR concert platform um, that will be available for other artists to use and simply and more easily get into making art for VR, even if they don't have a background that's technical. Because that's something that, you know, there's, it's one thing for an artist like, you know, Puff Daddy or Beyonce, um, even Bjork, to make these great experiences 
And it's like, oh yeah, well, you're the kid who's like 15 at home, and you're like, yeah, well, Bjork did it. She has all these resources. Like, how am I ever going to do that? But to really enable artists is like what I really want to do with that is give people the opportunity to then say, hey, I built this VR experience. Hey, now you can come to my show where you can experience my audiovisual experience. Yeah, so I think with my performances, it's an interesting place where I'm actually more vulnerable than most electronic musicians because I'm letting people see exactly what I'm doing in real time. And it's like, hey, if I'm literally playing a sample that's going to play for two minutes and I'm, then I'm just looking at stuff, people are going to be able to tell. You know, I can't, I can't hide behind a laptop screen or, you know, a big tower of lights, um, I'm there and they can see exactly what I see. So there's a vulnerability there that's really like a deep connection, even though I'm in a separate world and I'm kind of giving them my view of that. Um, but the other thing is that I'm all about the communal aspect of those shows as well um, and interested in this um, experimentation in communal VR, as I call it, where we still have the bringing together of people into the same space in the physical world but then being in VR in that space. Um, so, you know, coming together, if everyone has a headset on to experience something together, almost like the, the VR movie theaters that are popping up um, and having that shared experience, because if there's something ritualistic and meaningful and kind of magical about everyone coming together, I mean, it's been like generations upon generations back to gathering around campfires and different devices with drumming and all of that. Um, so I feel like that's super important to, to still bring people together. Um, and I don't think that technology necessarily brings pe people away from each other. Um, and I think that the true purpose of technology is to make us question and understand more our meaning in existence. And the more the technology develops, the more we'll be able to do that if people are willing to accept that. Which is maybe the, the challenge that people fight with the most. see um, I think that's I think that's what's beautiful about it is that I see it being something that I can't imagine so I mean in in five years if we're still using cell phones I feel like we failed um, I think we should all be using some sort of augmented reality to interact with a computational force um, and it's really going to be that as the standard until we are it's either gonna be that or embedded chips which everyone people like more um, and in terms of art and expression, I feel like it's going to explode in a million different directions and there's going to be so many different ways for people to interact with art, whether it be through, you know, really cool tactile senses that we can have computational things related to, or, I mean, there's, there's just so much in my mind about what's possible that it's like all just like kind of noise right now. <laughs>